Okay guys, <clears throat> in this video we're going to be talking about uh, some special cases when solving systems of equations using the method of substitution. So there are a few special cases uh, when using substitution to solve systems of equations. If you remember on uh, my last video, the solving systems of equations with substitution, um, you could always use substitution if you have one of the variables already solved for and plug that into the other equation to be able to solve for the other variable. So you have one equation, one variable. For example, if we do that method of substitution here, so we have y is equal to 3x minus 4, we're going to plug that expression for y into the other equation. So if we rewrite 3y is equal to 9x plus 6, but rather than the y, we're going to replace that y with the expression for y, which is 3x minus 4. So I'm going to plug in here 3x minus 4, or I should say substitute 3x minus 4, uh, into this equation so I can figure out what is the value of x. Now, something weird happens when I solve this. So this becomes a 9x minus 12 is equal to 9x plus 6. So when I try to solve for x, I subtract 9x on both sides, right? No, so minus 9x minus 9x, and then this goes away. So the variable goes away. Everything goes away. All we're left with is this equation, negative 12 is equal to 6. Now, if you stop and think about that, that equation makes absolutely no sense. Like, how is negative 12 going to be equal to 6? So this is a scenario in which when you have a system of equation with no solution. Now, once you guys get to the graph, um, to the graphing part of this, you would see that these lines are actually parallel, therefore they're never going to cross. So when you have a solution to a system, that means that that's the place where the lines cross. If you have no solution, that means that these lines actually never cross because they have the same slope and they start at different y-intercepts. So that's one special case. So no solution. Um, let's have another special case in this sense. So we have another example, uh, y is equal to 2x plus 5, and then 6y uh, minus 12x is equal to 30. So same idea, so same process. We're get, we have the y by itself on one side, right? So y is equal to 2x plus 5. We're going to replace that y in the other equation. So instead of 6y minus 12x is equal to 30, I'm going to write 6y, which happens to be 2x plus 5, right? So I'm replacing or substituting the value of y from the first equation. So 6 parentheses 2x plus 5, which came from the y, minus 12x, which came from here, equals 30. So if we try to solve this, same as the last one, we do the distributed property, which gives us 12x plus 30, and then drop down the 12x, and then set that equal to 30. Um, so we get that. Then we combine like terms like we usually would, right? So the x's go together, that goes with that. Notice that the x's go away. So now we have an equation, 30 is equal to 30. This is actually true, and this will never not be true, right? This is always gonna be true no matter what. 30 is equal to 30, duh, right? That makes sense. So this is an example in which we have um, infinitely many solutions. Now, all that means is just fancy for it's the exact same line. Like, how is that line not going to cross itself if it's the exact same line? So if you think about graphing a line, no solution, what that means is two lines that never cross, meaning that they're parallel, right? They're never going to cross. Therefore, no solution. The solution is the point where they cross. Now, if you have infinitely many solutions, all that means is it's the exact same line. So if I graph a line and then I graph the exact same line on top of it, how many times is this line going to touch? Well, it's always going to touch. Therefore, it's infinitely many solutions. So those are the special cases for solving systems of equations with substitution. I hope that kind of clears some stuff up for some of these examples.